Nintendo recently talked about the Switch 2 reveal, and what I find really interesting about it is I'm left with more questions than I am answers. Obviously, the answer is just reveal the system and then we move on. And I gotta be honest, I actually have a lot of faith in Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa. He seems like he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's very upfront about a lot of things. But when it comes to the reveal of Switch 2, while I do love the honesty he's giving us, especially recently, it kind of just adds a little more confusion to me, uh, especially if this device is releasing next year, which, you know, we all presume it is releasing next year. We don't know 100%, but it, it, it seems awfully likely that it is. So we're going to dive into what was stated lately by Nintendo's president and what I'm confused about and why I, I just don't get uh, what Nintendo is doing and how me not getting it probably doesn't matter because Switch 2 is going to probably go on to be a massive success anyways. Now, before I dive in, hey, if you're enjoying the conversations, the news, and all that, uh, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel. We're on a road to 140,000 subscribers. I would appreciate that. And we're going to go ahead and dive right in. So, yeah, Furukawa obviously had uh, the recent tweet go up over on the Nintendo IR account over on X. And then we also had, obviously, his statements from the investors meeting about there being backwards compatibility and Nintendo Switch Online being forwards compatible and that's cool a lot of that's really good stuff and i, I really do appreciate uh for akawa being so forthcoming during the investors meeting period but it's something he told a newspaper that has me a little bit miffed now we talked about this in a prior video uh, last week where Furukawa has essentially guaranteed that Nintendo Switch 2 could be revealed at any time, right? So uh, if you're still Team 2024, which more power to you, I've already moved on. I'm, I'm now officially Team 2025. But if you're still Team 2024, he didn't slam the door shut. But it's his exact wording that I just, I don't really understand what he's doing. So uh, he was asked whether or not the Nintendo Switch uh, 2 reveal, if it was revealed, uh, if it would have any impact on holiday sales during this newspaper interview. And he said, well, he won't pretend that it, it won't have a little impact. He doesn't really think it's that big of a deal. You know, his, his own words over there, just describing that, like, whether they reveal it or not, he doesn't think it'll have much impact um, on the sales. Now, that's obviously the comment that ended up leaving the door wide open to a reveal still this year. And some of you are still holding on to November. Some of you guys, I honestly think it's happening any day now. I Look, I used to be on that train with you guys. But uh, what I don't understand about this is if Nintendo Switch 2 is being revealed in March or, or coming in March, or if it's coming first half of next year, or if it's coming even holiday next year, and Nintendo themselves brought the system up in May saying they would have an announcement for it this fiscal year. And then they technically had an announcement for it last week with backwards compatibility and NSO, but then he inferred when he made that announcement that that wasn't the announcement they had planned for this fiscal year. Obviously also saying that there'll be more information on all this backwards compatibility stuff at a later date. So what I don't understand is if in Furukawa's mind, revealing the system would have only a little bit of impact on holiday sales, then why haven't they just revealed it? Uh, if it is coming next year and you're already willing to talk about it publicly twice now, like twice now you've talked about it this fiscal year, what's preventing you from revealing it? Why won't you? Is the fact that you said it would have a little impact be the reason that you don't want to reveal it? it, it that doesn't really seem... That doesn't really seem likely. You obviously had a packed slate of games. You have two of the first three months next year have games coming. Granted, they're just ports and remasters, but hey, it is something. Uh, you know, you don't really have much the rest of this year. I think there's Fitness Boxing 3 left to come out. But, and and actually, if you guys pay attention, it looks like the Mario and Luigi Brothers ship shales are actually... Um, not doing well for Nintendo. Uh, I know they announced recently their Black Friday deals, and if you're wondering why I haven't got a video out on that yet, uh, I'm waiting because I'm, I'm trying to compile basically the ultimate uh, Black Friday shopping guide slash Cyber Week shopping guide, right? I basically want to go like, here's all the places online you can get stuff, and here's some you know, in-person doorbuster kind of deals. We don't have all the information for that yet, so I'm gathering everything for just one giant video on it rather than making several. But... My whole thing when I'm looking at this particular aspect of Nintendo is that I don't get 
what Furukawa is doing. And in the end, I guess I don't have to, right? He has a plan, and I do trust him, and I think his plan is going to work. Uh, personally, I think he's going to have a very short uh, reveal to release. Like, I think he's going to reveal the system, and it's coming out like, two, three months after reveal. I think it's going to be one of the shortest reveal to releases in uh, brand new generation console history. But I also think it's very smart to do because it's an iterative platform that doesn't need a ton of explanation, that just needs a few big key sales points uh, to you know explain to consumers why they should buy this, why they should upgrade over Switch. And if that's not enough for you, we're still selling Switch. We're still releasing games on Switch. Uh, I think it's a pretty short, sweet, succinct, easy sales pitch kind of think of it like phone reveals every year we know like when iphone and samsung's are going to be revealed and we know they're probably going to be available to purchase literally the very next month and maybe even pre-orders up on the same day so we know how it works with phones and the why is it like that way well you don't need a six month build up to the next phone device one they release them yearly and two let's just be honest most of the upgrades are generally iterative like the big upgrades for iphone this year are all about Apple intelligence. Well, Apple intelligence is coming to last year's phones. So the big sales pitch this year is the camera button. Uh, and not everyone even likes the camera button, right? So that's why you don't really need uh, for them this big sales pitch. If you were already committed to upgrading to, uh, to, to the next phone, you're probably going to do it anyways, regardless of what they showed. Uh, so I think that's the way Nintendo's looking at it here with Switch 2. If you love Nintendo games and you love the best games they put out, well, they're all going to be exclusive on Switch 2. And I firmly believe Nintendo thinks that's the number one reason to buy a Switch 2 is because you want to continue to play all these amazing games that you've gotten to play on Switch, but now you're ready for the next version of them. You're going to need the next platform. And I think Nintendo knows that is the big sales purpose. So I don't think that they need to do anything other than show us games that you can only get on Switch 2. That alone is going to sell the platform. So I do believe that Nintendo has a pretty easy sales pitch and they don't need six months, a year of buildup. But I do recognize that Nintendo's never done that before. The shortest was Nintendo Switch and that was like four and a half months. So I do recognize that me thinking Furukawa is going to do something different is going against the history of Nintendo. So I understand if you disagree with me. But even if you disagree with me, I think this thing's being launched in August of next year, September, uh, the holidays, or some of you that even think 2026, but yet Nintendo's talking about it right now, then why not just reveal it? If you already think it's going to have very little impact on sales, not none, but very little impact on Switch sales, and Switch sales are still declining anyways, the software looks like it's underperforming anyways, then why not excite the user base and just reveal the thing? You keep talking about it, but you just won't show us it. You won't give us a name, a logo, a tease of what the launch game is. I kind of feel like I don't understand what Furukawa was doing here. Now, I want to be fair to him because this is the first time he's ever launched a new generation of hardware as the president of Nintendo. So I, I want to be very, very fair to Shintaro Furukawa. This is his first time doing this. He's been very honest along the way. Uh, and he's basically just telling everyone to be patient. We'll reveal it when we're ready. And I can appreciate that approach. Nintendo's approach in general has always been, we'll give you information when we're ready to give you information, whether it's about their games or the systems or anything. But also we know that manufacturing is increasing. We know that eventually assembly is going to begin. We know that once assembly begins on a massive scale, there's highly likely going to be factory leaks and pictures getting out we had that happen with the switch all that we had that happen with the switch light uh it's probably going to happen this time around uh technically we had drawn images and stuff getting out of the nintendo switch from the factories as well uh before that was revealed but we didn't get an actual picture of the device that 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 nintendo somehow kept that under wraps but since switch came out they haven't been able to keep it under wraps probably because hey they're making a hell of a lot more devices today than they probably were back in 2016 so uh yeah i i, I think it's just much harder there's one, many more employees and factories and companies involved now it's a lot harder to keep everything under wraps and i don't think nintendo wants the leaks to come from manufacturing i think ideally they want to show to the device like if they show to the device the leaks from manufacturing end up not mattering as much besides maybe getting a look at the box you know the box it's going to ship in or something like that but I, I, the, le the the manufacturing leaks don't really matter that much then if we just get the actual reveal the reveal takes care of 
any concern of that. And I do think by the end of December, there is a chance we may end up having the system leaked. And look, Nintendo has a plan, and I'm not you know, I'm not trying to rush Nintendo. I want to be very clear here. I am not rushing Nintendo to reveal this system as much as I wanted this thing revealed earlier this year. What I am saying is, if Furukawa keeps saying it'll be revealed this fiscal year, uh, we'll have details on stuff later, uh, we don't think it's going to impact holiday sales, even if we did reveal it or impact it much, it kind of makes you go, then why do you keep talking about it but not showing it? Why? Obviously, it's all part of the marketing plan, but why? I, I'm just confused. I don't know what the play is here, what the strategy is here. Um, I've taken some marketing courses, of course. I've never worked in big business uh, for marketing purposes, but I've taken some courses and I've talked to people in marketing. A lot of them don't really understand what Nintendo's doing either. Uh, they're just kind of doing whatever. I mean, Kit and Krista uh, were out there saying that they didn't think Nintendo would say anything, that the, the marketing play from Nintendo would be keep your mouth shut till next year. And then they went ahead and talked anyways, going completely against the experience they have working at Nintendo and how they marketed things. They decided, nah, we're going to talk anyways. Nah, we're going to give details anyways. Nah, we're not going to deny that it could be revealed this year because it could be revealed this year. We also might reveal it next year. We're going to keep it very vague. I don't know what Nintendo has to gain from that. And even if they aren't revealing it in 2024, which is totally fine and I don't expect it to be, why can't they just say it? Why can't they say it'll be revealed in the final quarter of the fiscal year? That's literally January, February, March. All they got to say is, we will have an announcement about the Nintendo Switch successor during the final corner, uh, quarter of this fiscal year. That's it. Even something like that. But was not even doing that. It, it's very... I think there's only one, one conclusion I can get from why Furukawa won't say anything. It's either... There's either one of two things are true. One is they haven't decided when they're going to reveal the system yet. I don't think that's the case. I think they clearly know when they're going to reveal it. Uh, but that is a possibility. So the reason it's kept open and vague is Nintendo doesn't actually know when. Uh, I, I get, that doesn't make any sense. Like If you think about it, there's only like four or five months to go left in the, left this fiscal year. Uh, at this point, I think they clearly have a plan. So then what's the other thing? Maybe, maybe Furukawa is doing something that's actually more modern than we realize. Maybe he's pushing the narrative of fan marketing. Let's think about it. How many Nintendo YouTubers have talked about Switch 2 this year? All of them at one point or another. Some of us daily, like my channel. Uh, others, you know, weekly. So all of us, right? Uh, how many uh, fans are talking about Switch 2? Hundreds of thousands, maybe millions across the various forums and social media platforms. How many times does Nintendo Switch 2 trend on places like X and uh, Blue Sky and, you know, even on Facebook, I've seen it trending all the time, you know, at least every month, right? So I wonder if Nintendo's trying a different strategy where they're going, we're going to reveal shortly, you know, like here's our reveal and the system's out in a month or two. But until then, we want to throw breadcrumbs out so fans drive the hype. Maybe they think the best marketing for Switch 2 is the marketing the consumers give it. And I feel like that would be a very bold strategy from Nintendo if that's what it is. Because that's the only explanation I have outside of them just not knowing when they're going to do it, which again, to me, doesn't make sense. Uh, for them to even give us breadcrumbs. Why are they telling us it'll be revealed this fiscal year, but not when this fiscal year? Uh, why are they telling us about backwards compatibility? And why are they telling us about the NSO stuff if you're not revealing the system? Because if you're not revealing the system, then it wouldn't really have any impact on the holiday sales, right? Right? That little impact they said it could have? Well, it's not going to have any if it's not revealed, right? Right? So we don't need to know about those features right now. So why tell us? Unless its intent is to get us to talk and talk and keep talking about Nintendo Switch 2. I think Nintendo wants it to happen. For all the criticism that I get on this channel, I'm actually starting to get to this idea that I think Nintendo wants channels like me to exist. I think it's benefiting them in some way. Now, what also leads me to think about this is there was a recent uh, Zelda interview uh, for Echoes of Wisdom, and not a lot in there uh, is relevant to this conversation except this one point where they were asked about um, you know content creators and stuff, and they admitted they are watching content creators. The Zelda team is watching videos. They're watching content creators. 
if you think the Zelda team is watching, you think Furukawa's not? Furukawa commented on rumors around Gamescom last year that were hitting all the media before he was even asked. He wasn't even asked a question about it, and he addressed it anyways. Before all the media is talking about all the videos, Furukawa might be more dialed in. I'm not sure that Owada, may he rest in peace, was watching content creators. I think Furukawa and his staff are. And I think they like that the content creators keep talking, keep speculating, keep driving the hype. Notice, they're not coming out and denying things we're talking about. They're not denying the mass manufacturing stuff, which, again, they've denied Switch 2 rumors before. They're not denying the mass manufacturing. They're not denying, um, you know, all these leaks and little features out there. In fact, I think Furukawa's not even annoyed by it. I think this is exactly what Nintendo wanted to happen. They wanted us fans to do promotion for them, which ends up building up extreme hype for the massive reveal. I think they're going for the short reveal, you know, to launch situation, which means having fans build up the anticipation is the best thing they could do to create one of the world's biggest viral marketing moments when it's revealed. Honestly, it's kind of smart, I think, if that's what he's doing. And this is why I trust Furukawa. Not because he's you know, silently okaying my content or even watching my videos. There's much bigger channels than me talking about Switch 2, by the way. I want to be very clear. I'm not the biggest channel in the block talking about Switch 2. There are channels way bigger than me getting 50, 60, 100,000 views a video uh, talking about Switch 2 almost every day, right? They're way bigger than me. But what I will say is I think we're playing right into Furukawa's hands. I don't know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am with Andrew Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you in the next video.